Taylor and Alan talking about movies. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to have... Nope. Every time I ask if there's going to be an intro, I know that there is. That's why That's why I sang it for you just now. So It you, did you, not matter. You would feel like we just had an intro so you could just, you know, jump in. Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> this is our podcast where we talk about things... That you would talk about on a typical podcast. I don't, I don't know how you can talk so naturally 95% of the time, but if you take two seconds to think about what you're gonna say, you become an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Your brain shuts down and you just, you can't do anything. Hi. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Two pod words of movies. This Taylor movies on the podcast. Well, you have a movie, right? It's I do have a movie. What movie? This movie oh. is Full Metal Jacket. Okay. I have, have you seen this movie? I have seen this. I feel like it's been a while since we've brought up a movie that we've both seen. Yeah. Um, Full Metal Jacket. So I've I've seen it once. I've only seen it once. I've never I've never rewatched it. I yes. re- I remember the um the training the ba- uh, boot camp pretty yeah. well, and then the second half when they're actually at war felt like a completely yes. different movie, and I have a hard time remembering what happened there. Yeah, it really is uh, like two different movies. It's funny because I've seen the first half of this movie probably. 20 times, and I've only seen the second half once. Okay. So it's not um, crazy, right? Like, it's, it's, no, it's, it's not crazy. <laughs> it's, the, the first half is definitely better, more enjoyable. Um, me and Joey would watch this all the time, but we'd only <laughs> watch up until the end of boot camp, and then either we would just stop watching or something would happen, and I, I remember only watching it through once, maybe twice, but, Pretty much, it was just about the boot camp. That you, was like it was like a short film that we like to watch. Do you feel like you were indoctrinated into military stuff? Like, yes, because as a kid, you were all about it, and now you don't see much about it at all. Like, you spit on soldiers when they walk past. Uh, most of them. <laughs> Those are just the ones that are related to me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You don't spit on soldiers that are strangers. You just, your family that became a soldier. Just my family. Yes. I guess that's not related. It's just a coincidence. Also, I spit on my family that isn't in the military. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so that, that's just a coincidence that they might, they happen to be soldiers as well. It's just coincidence. Uh, I'm sorry about spreading all those rumors to the, the vets. To uh, the military. <laughs> yeah. I, well, yeah, I knew something was up when I started getting spit on back. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, do you feel like you were not brainwashed, but brainwashed for sure? You know, you felt you felt. Uh, no, I def- Yeah, we definitely. I was definitely all for it. I planned to join the Marines when I was of age. Um, what happened that changed your I- mind? Uh, I realized there, there was <laughs> so many other things I could do. Or was it, it just, do they not want anymore. you anymore? Is that what would happen? That might have happened. <laughs> They're like, no, we're good. <laughs> Thanks. They're like, you know what? Like, we're recruiting, like, literally almost everybody, but we're good. We'll, we'll call you if we start doing suicide bombings, but uh, right now we're good. Yeah, we'll let you know if there's a draft. Until then, stop calling us, please. <laughs> Are you glad? Uh, yeah. Are you glad that you didn't go into the military? Uh, yeah, because I, I don't know where my life would be at this point. There's you, no telling. You don't think you would have been in the military and still worked at Pump It Up at the same time concurrently? Well, well, the plan would have been probably to be deployed and then open up my own Pump It Up in Afghanistan. That that would solve a lot of the issues there. If they had more bounce like- houses in Afghanistan, we should start like a, a a non-profit bounce houses to Afghanistan. I'm I'm all about that. But it should be for profit. Can you make a non-profit for profit? Yeah, I think you just call it a business. Oh, is that what it is? 
Cause, uh, um, yeah, there's a lot of people that I've seen working in my line of, uh, life <laughs> that do nonprofit, but, and uh, it's not quite, not quite nonprofity, not quite as noble as it sounds, unfortunately. Boo to those people. I agree. And also to my brother. Yeah. Boo, Joshua. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that obviously I think stands out, well, two things. Yes. The drill sergeant, which is, you yes. met him, right? So yeah, that's another, I was going to say, that's another reason why I felt, we, we felt like a, a, a tie to this movie because while in the Young Marines, we had the opportunity to meet Arlie Ermey, who is the drill sergeant from the movie. He was a drill sergeant in real life, and then also in the movie. Also, he played, he was the Sarge from Toy Story movies. Now, um, is it true? Is it, I might be yeah. making this up. Probably. But I believe he was only supposed to be a consultant on the movie. And it was like, yeah, you guys are not doing this good at all. Let me show you how it's yeah, done. Yeah, Pretty much, they brought him in to, yeah, like I said, to be a consultant, and he just felt that the way that they were trying to portray the drill sergeant was not authentic. And he, at one point, I guess he got angry enough to yell at the director, and then it got him the job. <laughs> That's what I do. I just show up at businesses and start yelling in people's face and hope they give me a job. Yeah, and it's worked, what, three or four times now? Yeah. Uh, I believe that's also how you got Sam to marry you. Yes, I just <laughs> I forced her into it. The jobs were all at uh, hearing aid factories, so it was yeah. Where you <laughs> it was much less aggressive. Out. But uh, with Sam, I, I don't know how that I was able to swing that. I'm still I'm still confused constantly. Yeah, I'm not convinced there wasn't some kind of payout <laughs> to her. <laughs> I can't talk about it. There's the NDA. Oh, I forgot. When does that even expire? It's got to be coming up, right? Uh, we can talk about it. Well, no, it's after one of us dies. Okay, so when? So soon? I mean, what are we looking at here? Well, I I'm afraid she's poisoning me slowly but surely. I brushed my teeth the other day, and it tasted like chemicals. Can you get her to commit to coming on the show if she does kill you to talk about it? Um. I'm, Just see if she's open to it. To talk about the our agreement, the, the murder, the, the, well, the, the, mur <laughs> the agreement slash murder. <laughs> I, I'll see what I can do. I don't know because I want to say after like ten years, she has the <laughs> an opt out in her contract, and that is just murder. <laughs> it is in there. You're right. You were there when we signed all the paperwork. I thought. Why, if oh, you yeah. were there, I, was there, I was there when it was written. We are not good at improv because you did not know about the NDA when we started this line of <laughs> conversation and now you were there and now you were there well, when it was written. Yeah, I had to act like I didn't know because I didn't think we were talking about it. But oh yeah, you signed it. it so. You signed an NDA about the NDA. I, yeah, a separate NDA. Yeah. No opt out of mine. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Yeah, there's, there's no telling. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but yeah. So, no. So you met the guy. How was that? Did he yell in you your face? Him. Uh, he did not yell in our face. He did yell, just like um, because everyone wanted him to, like a party trick. So, yeah, pretty much. He said, "Yell, dog," and then he did. Do you? Uh, uh you think? No, he was cool. He just like goes home and just is whispers. <laughs> like that's his that's that's how he takes time off of work. He just whispers to his wife. He he starts getting angry. He's like, "You know what? I'm bringing my work home with me and I'm sorry. I'm not going to yell." <laughs> uh, like just please give me a break. Let me whisper. What were uh were there any family friendly uh, insults that he had in uh Full Metal Jacket? Fam <laughs> <laughs> is that a real question? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was trying to think Family of, friendly. I was trying to think of them, but there's none that I would like to repeat. Um, yeah, I'm going to say definitely not. <laughs> like, especially a lot of the things he said were eye-opening as a child watching this movie. <laughs> a lot of things I did not know what he was talking about. I slowly learned over the years. 
Um, so yeah, the plot of this movie. Who is, who is the, the lead character? I can't even remember that. Who's, uh, uh okay. <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, cause everyone has like, uh, nicknames, right? No one goes by their yeah. full name. I want to say he's, uh, oh, thing. I don't remember. I know there was Gomer Pyle. Yep. He's the one who killed and, himself. Yeah. So I know there was eight ball and a guy named Cowboy. Uh, I'm, oh, and, uh, Joker. And I want to say he's the main guy. Joker is. I, I, if there is a main guy, it's almost like the main character, there's two main characters. The first one being boot camp and the second one being just the Vietnam War. Yeah. It, it, it's almost not real centric on anyone. So it just shows the horrors of war. Yeah. So on my other podcast, I had the chance to interview my grandfather who went to Vietnam. Yes. And he, so he, he wasn't drafted, but he uh, opted in or decided to not go to jail <laughs> instead. Yeah, that's um, a way to put it. What, whatever that is considered. But he uh, he said he was so scared when he showed up that first day getting off the bus. They mm-hmm. were uh, getting all their clothes, right? So they're on a line and going from window to window, kind of like a cafeteria setup or, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and uh, he was like so nervous, he didn't know what to do. That he was just copying the person next to him, and my grandpa was like, you know, five, five, six, maybe. I don't, I don't know exactly how tall he is. Um, he's probably five eight. Yeah, he's probably five eight. I'm probably like cutting him way down, but he's not, he's not tall, right? And he was like really skinny at this time. The guy next to him was like six four or something like that, and he was just oh. saying everything the guy next to him was saying because his mom my uh my great grandma bought all his clothes so he didn't know Uh his sizes he didn't know anything nice so when he got to the end his clothes were all baggy and like falling off of him and he got he got chewed out pretty good for that that's funny did he do you think he looked like steve rogers before he was captain america yeah he looked like the hulk coming after uh, they look like after, Bruce Banner after being the Hulk. Coming down from yeah, the Hulk? Yeah. Um, oh, that's funny. But yeah, so when you and Joey, when you guys were kids and you would watch this movie, did it make you want to join the military? That's like, I, so, yeah, it's weird how it <laughs> does that. <laughs> Cause it is not a, it's not a fun movie in any sense. No, it does not glorify the military at all. No. Cause it's all about the mental trauma. Mostly, at least the first half, is mostly about Gomer Pyle and the yes. the, the mental anguish he was under. Because he was overweight and was struggling to get through. So he was always getting picked on, always getting chewed out. And uh, towards the end of his story, his life in the movie, he shoots the, the drill instructor. Right? Drill. Yes. And then he shoots himself. Correct. And, uh, he snaps. He snaps. Well, because so so at the same time as he's he's getting like mentally abused by you know the the drill the drill instructor and everything, mm. he's also he's making things harder for his his oh, his yeah. group because he's like sneaking in food, and so every time he gets caught, everyone else gets punished while he sits there and eats. So like everyone's got to run or they have to do like push ups while he gets to eat the food. That's his punishment. Eventually, it drives the rest of the guys to one night they uh, – I don't remember what they call it. A red Code light. red or something. Yeah. Yeah, light. something like that where they pretty much you know, tie him down or they hold him down to his bed and they just beat him with bars of soap inside their socks. Yeah, so they – they like two guys grab his sheets and yank it down because he's on the top bunk. I think they got, they got four guys. Or four guys. And so they, they, put a, they put a blanket over him and they hold down the corners. Yeah. And – just the rest of the guys just beat the crap out of him. Yeah, and it was it was not a fun thing to watch. Like, oh no, it's rough. It's, for sure. I mean, it's not supposed to be. Obviously, any type of torture is not supposed to be enjoyable. The reason they do it is to make you uncomfortable. But still, like, yeah, I was not excited about watching it. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the tipping point. He he snaps after that, and 
it's all downhill from there. Yeah. So do you remember what you felt about the movie at the time? Like, were you excited watching him kill himself? Like, what, what was going on that you guys watched it multiple times together? Uh, I don't know if I was excited to watch him kill himself as I just was, I, it, it was part of the movie. I just like to watch the movie. Yeah. Um, no, it was definitely, definitely disappointing or uh, upsetting. Yeah. But it, it's just part of the movie, so it's it's a bummer because then because then you watch Arlie Ermy get shot and you're like, ah, I met that guy. <laughs> now he's gone. Um, so over and over. Again. What do you remember about the second half of the movie? Because I I like I have very little memory of that. Uh, so basically, they are deployed to Vietnam during the war, and it's pretty ugly. I remember there being. Lots of dead bodies and fire. Uh, Vietnamese prostitutes. I want to say, no, I don't even know. All I, the, the, to be honest, the only thing that really stands out to me is the very last scene of the movie. I don't, I don't know if you remember it. Basically, it's like a, a big group of the guys, right? There's probably 20 guys and they're marching like through fire wasteland and bombs are going off and everything and they're singing the theme to the Mickey Mouse Club. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. You should look that up. It's very it's almost chilling to watch. It's it's cool cuz it's like they're they're singing a, a kid song but at the same time it's 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 like a contrast between it being a kid song and and the horrors of war. Yeah. It's uh it's it's a very, I thought it was very very uh, well done. It's it's a pretty cool scene. I'd say it's somewhat iconic. I mean, obviously you've never heard of it, so I don't know how iconic. But <laughs> if you, you you should check it out. It's only like a minute long, and yeah. they're just like marching through the the land, you know. And there's everything's on fire and yeah. whatnot, and they're singing the Mickey Mouse theme. That's who you wanted to be. You wanted to be walking through destruction. I I wanted to be that. Yeah, I wanted that to be my life. <laughs> Um, speaking of prostitutes, I have a prostitute oh, yes. story that I don't think I've told on this show before. I don't know that you've told any prostitute stories. So living in Thailand, there are lots and lots of prostitutes. It's a pretty, yes. a lot of people come here because of that. An epidemic. <clears throat> and, uh, so my friend was driving his motorcycle. He was going, well, so I'll give a little more backstory. I'm going to I'm going to really ramp up to this story just so you know. Get okay. get get comfortable guys. Buckle in. D- it ends with prostitutes though. Don't worry. Okay, so there is a payoff coming. <laughs> yeah. He um uh, he <clears throat> uh, so he he was working with some Burmese guys and he needed to run to the store real quick and Instead of, so his motorcycle was like parked kind of off to the side. It was a little inconvenient to get. And his, his buddy, Burmese guy pulls up on his bike and he's like, Hey, let me take your motorbike. Just got to run down the road real quick. I'll be right back. So he hops on his buddy's motorbike. It's going down the road. Well, he didn't know that he didn't have back brakes, which if you've ever driven a motorcycle, very important to have back brakes. Like, I'd say probably almost driving almost anything. Yeah. Yeah. That requires back brakes. Yes. <laughs> and uh so he went to turn and when he hit the back brakes, nothing happened. Oh, and so nice. he was going too fast, started turning, hit his front brake. Well you you can't really uh, it, Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't work, work like that. <laughs> yeah. And so he hit his front brake and the front tire, you know, s- kind of stops moving, but the back tire where the engine so did he go over the top? No, he didn't go over the top. Um, but the engine kept going, right? Like the the motor was okay. still pushing the back tire. So the front the front wheel stops and the back tire kind of slid out from under him, and he just went mm-hmm. down on his side, just hard. Well, mm-hmm. I was driving back uh, from one of our. We were out visiting the garbage dump where a bunch of people live, and I was driving back, and he crashed. Right in front of me, where I was going the opposite way. Yeah. So I saw everything, and I hopped out, and I was talking to him. 
I picked up his motorbike and dusted him off and was checking to see how he's doing. And, uh, he was like, do you think I need to go to the hospital? I was like, well, how do you feel? He's like, oh, I feel okay. You know, like I'm, I'm hurt, but I don't think anything's broken. I was like, well, you're probably fine. He's like, all right. And then like a few minutes later, he's like, Hey, are you sure? Do you think I should go to the hospital? And I looked at him. <laughs> his, his collarbone was sticking oh, up no. two inches <laughs> through his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So it didn't it didn't come through, but he separated his shoulder, and uh, uh, yeah. the bone you could see it uh, poking through his shirt, through his skin. Uh, not not yeah, it's not it wasn't compound, it, it wasn't sticking up. But so it's like oh yeah, you need to go to the hospital right now. So I took him to the hospital in town. And they checked him out and they put the worst brace. It's like the exact opposite of what he needed on him. <laughs> Uh-huh. And so afterwards, we we're like talking to him. I was like, you, you need to get a second opinion because this doctor's saying like, oh, you know, three weeks, everything will heal up. You'll be fine. It's like that doesn't sound accurate. And so I told him, I was like, well, let me, let me drive you to Bangkok and you can go see, you know, like a real high quality doctor and figure it out there. Uh-huh. And, uh, <clears throat> so we hop in the car and hit one of his friends called ahead and set up a uh, a hotel for us to stay in. And it was like getting everything worked out because we just like hopped in the car and left right away. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't have time to like set anything up. Everyone, uh, Other people were taking care of everything. Well, they, they picked a hotel that was somewhat close to the hospital he needed to go to, but oh, it boy. was in the middle of the red light district. And so nice. we left town to get to Bangkok. It's about an eight, nine hour drive. We left town around two. We showed up. It was like eleven, eleven thirty p.m. And there was just like fifty prostitutes, like cat calling us. Here's my. my it's like a minefield. Yeah, my buddy is just wrecked. His his shoulder, his arm is hanging off his body, basically. <laughs> and he's just these these prostitutes are like, "Hey, come over here, come over here." And we're just like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." We get into our hotel and this hotel is so nasty. It was like so run down. We get to our hotel room. The door had been kicked open. The locks were ripped off the walls and we, nice. we both slept on top of the covers with the lights on all night and, uh, oh, yeah. didn't really sleep at all. It was, <laughs> did it, you keep watch? Yeah, basically we were, it was, it was so gross. It was so nasty, but uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty upsetting. But, uh, yeah, that's my prostitute story. That does not sound ideal. (laughs) No. Huh. Well, thank you for the prostitute story. Yep. What's your prostitute story? Um, I don't know that I have a prostitute story except for, hmm, I remember the first time. I think I remember seeing prostitutes. We were in Vegas. We were going on, we were going to like Colorado or Wyoming and we were passing through Vegas. And I don't remember exactly, I don't remember why, but we ended up having to stay in Vegas, but we stayed at like a Motel 6 in Vegas. Yeah. And I remember it was like at night and because we got there late and I remember looking out the front door and the parking lot, there was probably like five or six prostitutes like hanging out and i remember i i I vaguely remember asking my mom or dad like what are these people doing and they just ignored me they're like no we're not gonna answer that (laughs) oh man it wasn't until i don't know it it was probably a couple years later that story for whatever reason i remembered i was like oh okay they are prostitutes (laughs) I'm glad I didn't have to have that conversation with my parents. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so getting back to <laughs> Full Metal Jacket, what do you yes. think, or uh, why do you think they made the movie? What do you think the 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 message they were trying to put out was? Um, if there is a message, which I'm sure there is, uh, that's tough. I I would have to say. Potentially, it could be something along the lines of it's not war is maybe not as 
I don't, I don't even know if fun is the right word, but fun as, as it looks on TV or in the movies <laughs> which or I, in MASH. Which is ironic because you guys were still watching it, Mike. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, it's not as fun as MASH makes war look. So, I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. It, honestly, it, for all I know, it could be an anti-war propaganda film. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I like again, I, like I said, I hadn't seen it for a long time. I would say it, it's just trying to highlight how how broken it makes people. Yeah. Oh, you for know? sure. Like, what kind of what they have to go through to get to the point where you can sing the Mickey Mouse song after going through all that stuff, you know, like. Yeah, I would even say not that Saving Private Ryan is makes, you know, war look fun. Obviously not. And it's a devastating story, but I don't feel like it, it shows the effects of war on the characters. Yeah. You know, well, there's and, a- and, and that's. There was an interesting thing that happened between World War Two and the Vietnam War, even the uh-huh. Korean War to the Vietnam War, is uh, color TV and yes. TV in general became more oh. and more prevalent. And so, yeah, for sure, where you had you know heroes coming back uh, from war uh, before the Vietnam War. Now they're publicizing it all and showing graphic images and like, this is what's happening. This is, you know, all this stuff. And it, people saw it and was like, why is this so much worse than what everyone yeah. else was doing? When in fact, it was, it's war is war. You know, it's always, well, yeah, war is war. Yeah, exactly. It's always like, terrible. It's always, you know, just awful. But yet, yeah, and I, I think you're right as far as the, 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 uh, the media coverage of it. Because, okay, when you think of like World War One, what do you think of? Uh, Battlefield One. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> it, it almost doesn't, like, it doesn't feel like it was as bad as like World War Two or even Vietnam, but. Yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand is how brutal World War One was because there was a lot less, uh, a lot less, uh, guns and, you know, big, like, artillery, tanks, stuff like that, and more, lots of, like, hand-to-hand trench warfare and stuff like that. It was a mess. Well, also. And I, I think you- it gets over, it gets glossed over a lot. You also, if you got hurt, you were probably going to die. Yeah, th- yeah, you weren't coming back. If you got any kind of, because, I mean, yeah, think of even if you got something that is easily treatable now, back then, not only was there not the, the type of medicines that we had, you know, that we have now, but there was not enough. Yeah. There, you know, no one's gonna, you're, if you're going to get an infection, you're going to lose your limbs. Just, yeah, there's a good chance you don't come back. Like... For how, you know, tragic and, uh, unfortunate it is for soldiers to lose a limb or, you know, to get really hurt in war now, think about how many come back and are able to still live a life. You know, like the advancements in medicine and transportation and the knowledge and all this stuff is keeping people alive much mm-hmm. better now than it oh, would yeah. have been it's- back then. Like, um, a much minor thing back then would have easily have been the end of your life compared to now. Yep. Like, and, and it's not nothing about like trying to compare like which one is easier or anything like that. It's just saying, trying, just trying to point out like it's, it was so brutal back then and mm-hmm. you, the consequences were much higher for much less. I guess it's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if that makes any sense. Or is yeah, it inaccurate? No, sure. It could be completely off base, but I feel like it's true. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Um, so that was, that, I feel, yeah, like that's just something that kind of gets glossed over a lot. Um, I mean, back then, even people were, you know, we were still riding horses into war. Yeah. 
like that was a main, you know, the cavalry was still a huge part of the military and s- stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I asked, I asked my grandfather what it was like coming back and like, well, cause he wouldn't wear his uniform back home cause they would get spit on and, you know, mm-hmm. get treated terrible and get called baby killers and all this different stuff. And I asked him, I was like, well, what, what was the response from vets? from previous wars, like from the Korean War, from World War II, from World War One. Yeah. What was their reception to you guys? And he's like, oh, no one, no one ever talked about it. He's like, I, I worked with vets, but I never knew it. I didn't know who, yeah. where they fought. Like, they had their war, I had my war, and we, we just were quiet about it. We never brought it up. And I was like, man, that's, that's intense, you know? Like, you can't oh, even, for sure. you can't even come home and, find safety in people who understand what's going on. You know, like it's a, yeah. it's so tragic. The, the way America dropped the ball with the Vietnam war in the way it treated the soldiers. Like I, I know there's a lot of political stuff. I know that there's a lot of weird stuff going on. I know that, you know, fighting a war that's not for land is always going to be really weird when you're giving up something that you just sacrificed for and going mm-hmm. back the next day to fight for it again. Like, yeah, that's, there's not, how are you going to ever gauge progress? Like there's a lot of weird stuff with that war, but yeah, the soldiers weren't the ones making those decisions. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's, it was tough. And, and Vietnam was a very ugly war because it was, it was a very, I'll just, I'll just say it was a very different opponent than world war two. Yeah. And the different types of warfare, you know, it, yeah. Plus, yeah. And then you come back to people who thought you had no business being over there. So anything that happened to you, you, you deserve it. You brought it on yourself. Yeah. Well, I would just like to take the moment to say thank you to all the soldiers and to all the vets. Even if Taylor yeah, hates you and disrespects you and tries to spit on you. That's not the stance of I seen that or me. That's that's solely Taylor's thing. Uh, I don't like it. I don't agree with it, but I have to accept it. So you like to think all vets, veterinarians, veterans of war. Uh, what about Joshua? Hmm. He are you sure he really was in the Marines? Uh, not a hundred percent sure. Can we call Stolen Valor? Is there a way to, is there a Stolen Valor court that we can, before I thank him, I want to make sure that he was actually in there. Um, I can't get a confirmation on it, so I guess we can just boo him. Yeah. Boo. 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 Also, wasn't one of his main stories that his own guys tried to kill him with a helicopter? Uh, I believe that was the Air Force and they landed a helicopter on his tent. <laughs> But he, he legitimately almost died from that, right? Like it, if he didn't get out of there, it probably would have killed him. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if these days having a helicopter land on you is quite the death penalty as it was back then. If a like, World War that, One helicopter landed on you? World War One, <laughs> maybe even like a Civil War era helicopter landed on you back then. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna die. Well, that's where, you know, uh, Lincoln did the Gettysburg Address from hanging outside a helicopter. He was, he was, yeah. It was impressive. It was pretty good. No one could hear him. No. The whole Gettysburg <laughs> Address is made up from what they thought he was talking about. Uh, well, if uh, Full Metal Jacket comes on, what are you going to do? Uh, I will definitely, okay, if it's, if it's in the first half... I'll watch it for sure. Second half, uh, I'll probably still watch it just because I don't have a lot of knowledge of it. Yeah. I need to, I need to watch just, just watch the second half like 20 times to catch up. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is one I would like to see, but it's also one that I, I can't see preparing myself emotionally to watch again. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it definitely is, is an event. Yeah. Um, but if anything, I, I would recommend at least watch that last scene that I was talking about. It's pretty good. Yeah. I will check it out. 
Um, and that's all I got. So this episode is coming out January 28th, which means two days ago, Maze Runner, The Death Cure came out. Oh, jeez. What were your opinions of this movie? Okay, so I saw this movie, and it was just as bad as it sounds. Basically, there's a... Wait, what is it called? <laughs> Maze Runner, The Death Cure. Oh, that, okay, so so there's an epidemic in the land of the mazes, uh-huh. uh, and it's death. Ooh. And the only way to stop death is obviously the death cure. Yep. Uh, one guy is given the death cure, but he has to make it through the maze. Uh, spoiler alert, does not make it. People mm-hmm. continue to die for the rest of their lives. So you know this is a part of a trilogy, right? Uh, yeah, I saw the first one, did not care for it. Okay. I also read the first book, did not care for that either. I read the first, I think I read three books, and then they made a fourth one that I did not get into. Oh, really? I, I didn't know that. Do you, no, I guess you didn't read the third book, so you wouldn't know. Um, no. <laughs> do you think they're gonna make another one? Do you think this, is this the final of the series? Are they gonna come back for more? Well, I don't know how they can come back because everyone died. Like, okay. every single person in the universe died. Was it like Rogue One? Uh, yeah, but except for you get to see each person die individually. Don't you do that in Rogue One? I guess there's a couple of people that die together. Yeah, everyone has a unique death. Gotcha. What was the most creative one? Uh, one guy just had a heart attack. Okay, that sounds pretty creative. <laughs> I got nothing. All right, well, if you would like to help us out, you can go over to Patreon, and with a dollar, you can vote for Taylor or I, and whoever has the least amount of votes at the end of January is going to have to pay the punishment, which I think we decide is going to be a headstand, right? Uh, for January, yes. Yeah. And uh, can you do a headstand? Um. I've never t- attempted it, so at this point I say probably. I have, I have no reason to believe that I can't. All right. I do not think you can. I think uh, you're going to hurt yourself. I think we'll never find out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so whoever is has the least amount of votes has to pay the punishment. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod, And uh, we just want to take a second to thank Boss Play for being our sponsor. Yeah, uh, we definitely appreciate uh, the sponsorship, and we thank you.